I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am. Watching Great Scott. No, you ain't seen the basement, bitch! Great Scott! Is that, is that sinking in? Great Scott is a man. Great Scott! Great Scott! Oh, what is your problem? Oh, oh. Great Scott! You're the smartest guy I ever met. And you're too stupid to see. He made up his mind ten minutes ago. Do you want to watch Great Scott? Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special episode of Great Scott on the day of the Breaking Bad finale. So, for about six years or so now, we've been watching the antics of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. Meth makers, uh, family savers, um, friends, enemies, frenemies, um, do what they do, uh, killers at times, um, saviors at other times, uh, let's just remember we're in the Empire business. The last week was kind of a, uh, it was a little bit of a letdown after the two weeks previous where we had the gunfight break out and then we saw Hank uh, and his demise. Then we also saw kind of Walter White fall from his precipice of uh, drug kingpin down to a uh, sniveling, crying man who had been broken, who is dying, and who has now lost most of his money. I thought it was kind of nice of the gunman, the evil gunman, to uh, say, hey, we'll let you keep uh, one barrel, which I guess is about 10 or 11 million. Then, of course, Walter ran back to his house and tried to get his family out as quickly as he could. But uh, Skyler, played by Anna Gunn, who won the Emmy Award last week, if you saw it, for, uh, I guess, supporting female, which is unusual because uh, she's the lead female in this particular show, but I guess they're saying that uh, she's a supporting actor in this whole story, so she could be nominated for supporting actor. That there are rules and there are decisions made um, as to what is what. Um, American Horror Story, for instance, keeps getting nominated in the miniseries category, and I personally think that's unfair because it's a full series. I mean, it's a different set up every year it's different characters it's a different story but it's 12 episodes or 13 episodes or whatever it is it's a full length series and it's an ongoing you know it was season one season two and now season three is going to be starting soon so i'm not sure what the rules are but obviously you can skirt them the same with um aaron paul as jesse pinkman he's been nominated uh, every year every time he's nominated he's nominated in the best supporting actor category and he was nominated this year and he lost out to someone on boardwalk empire which uh, I can't really comment on because I haven't watched it yet, and I really do want to watch it. I'm sure that he's wonderful. Um, but I, of course, wanted to see Aaron Paul win. And the biggest heartbreak of all is that Walter White himself, Brian Cranston, did not win. He was, of course, Nominated and he lost out to uh, Jeff Daniels on the newsroom, you know, the guy from Full House from years ago. Uh, he's made a name for himself and he's now on, I guess, a dramedy. And uh, again, but it's a little unfair for me to say because, as I said, I, I haven't seen it. And this, of course, I made the decision in the last week that Breaking Bad is my favorite television show of all time. And on that list are a lot of great shows, 
I just can't imagine another show gripping me and holding on to me and uh, uh, exciting me and, and uh, uh, just doing everything it does to me every week. And I've loved a lot of shows, but this is just outside the margins, outside the borders, outside of what you would normally see on television. I get yelled at, you know, I get told, oh, I just think it's the people who, you know, uh, love the Timothy McVeighs and champion the uh, people who uh, uh, kill other people that would want to watch a show like this. And it's not that at all. I mean, this show has so much depth, so much great character, so much great story, so much great plot. It's so just, just... I mean, it's incredible. And uh, to see the growth or decline of these characters over the years that we've watched them is what makes it really great. And it's, it's, it's genius. You know, Vince Gilligan has done a wonderful job. The cast he put together is magnificent. The most recent episode, we, as I said, it was a little bit of a letdown after the two great episodes before, but not because it's bad. It was a very good episode. And of course, it was set up to set up tonight's finale. The uh, main purpose of the 75-minute episode last week was to show us where we were going to end up for the big the big ending this week, and as they've been, have they've been toting for weeks, all bad things must come to an end, and unfortunately, I still get people that say things like, he's so evil, how could you watch him? How could you still root for him? And I think that half the fan base is uh, one way and half the fan base is another. I think that some people are just like, he's so despicable, I couldn't possibly uh, uh, root for him anymore. I, I guess he has to go down in the finale. And then I get some people who are saying, no, I, I still root for him. I don't know why. I guess I'm not supposed to, but I still root for the guy. Uh, I think for me, it's because he started off as this guy who felt like he was a nobody, this guy who got no respect, this guy who worked for paltry dollars as a chemistry teacher in a high school and kind of got laughed at for that kind of thing and didn't reach his full potential. He was a guy who kind of sat around and let other people make decisions for him, who was quiet and, and, and mousy and didn't really do much in his own life. And uh, he was a guy who found power and found control and found respect and found that he did not want to release all of that to uh, give it up. And then he finally did give it up, and then he was kind of pulled back in. And many times he was going to give it up, and with the expenses and his cancer and, and his family that were going to suffer, he decided to do it, and now, of course, he has brought probably even greater suffering on his family. Obviously, Hank is dead. Uh, but, uh, you know, his son said to him, why don't you just die already, which is interesting, because he said that same thing to him in the very first season before Walter White became this drug kingpin. He said it to him uh, when Hank, when Walter didn't want to get the treatment, and, and I could totally see why he wouldn't want to get the treatment. Uh, it's hours and hours every week. It's sitting there. It's people crowding around you. It's therapy. It's trying to deal with it. It's spending the last however many months or years of your life uh, pretty much doing something that is most of the time futile in an attempt to survive. And it's going to put your, your family into immense debt that they're never going to recover from. She's got a baby on the way. She's got a son. She's going to be a single mother. He didn't want that to happen. So I feel like his reasons for doing it were heroic and altruistic, even though it was the wrong thing to do and, and, and a crime, that didn't make him evil. Now, of course, he's done things over the course of the series that could be considered evil, but I still don't look at him personally as an evil man or a bad man. He's done bad things. He's made bad decisions. He uh, has a lot of pride and a lot of hubris. It's a little bit like a Shakespeare story where the hero or uh, main protagonist of the show ends up going down at the end due to his pride and his hubris, which looks like the way they're going here. Now, I loved the ending of the last episode where Walter was going to turn himself in and, and had called the cops on himself after his son told him to go ahead and die and, and fuck off and all that. And, and he had nothing else to live for, and he's dying anyway, and he wants to kind of clear his family. And obviously, if he turns himself in, they don't have to keep concentrating on Skyler, and they don't have to keep, you know, I'm sure Walter Jr. is having a hard time in school. Uh, he was probably teased throughout anyway because of his handicap, and now 
Uh, I'm sure that everybody's on him for his father being a drug kingpin. Um, so his decision was probably the right one considering the circumstances, but I think he still got a little fight left in him, and seeing his friends from Grey Matter Technology, he realized that he started off as a nobody. He started off as a guy who had no respect and wanted to get some more, and now these people are painting him as a guy who was a nobody, is a nobody, didn't contribute to anything, and uh, um, uh, he doesn't like that. You know, I've heard from people that they expect that he's going to use the ricin on his friends from Grey Matter, or he's, you know, going to kill them, and that's where he's going, because that's clearly what, what uh, woke him up at the bar there and what pissed him off. They could go that way. I didn't see it that way. My feeling on it was that that was just kind of a kick in the ass to tell him it's not time to give up now. I mean, I'm going to die. I got nothing to lose. I got to go out there, maybe get my money back, maybe get rid of Lydia, maybe maybe even save Jesse and get this money to my family however I can and clear them at the same time. If I go down um, and, and, uh, and the thought is that this other company stole my money from me, maybe he's going to set this whole thing up to make it look like uh, they stole it from him and there is no money and then he's somehow going to get it to them. I don't know how it's going to work because you wouldn't think they'd be able to keep the money. But since that was the whole reason he went into it for, And I argue with people, they say, not now. Clearly, he doesn't care about his family now. I don't think that's true. I think that he was overtaken by the power and by, by the respect he was getting and by the fear he was instilling in others and the money and the greed. And obviously, all of that uh, definitely hurt his character and brought him down to a level where a lot of people don't like him anymore. It's hard to like somebody like that. I still like him. I still like seeing him do what he does. I still love the whole idea and obviously as I said he's a bad guy he's done some bad things but I don't think of him as evil I still think he was doing it to be a contributor to something important and get some respect for himself and get respected by others and to save his family from financial ruin while he was getting this drug treatment this cancer treatment and uh, I loved how when he saw them on the television at the bar he uh, finally woke up realized he couldn't give up with everything ending the way it was or it was all for nothing and he was a failure after all this and uh, you know the cops all bust in there and then the music starts playing and we see his glass with a tip and that he has not given up and that he was going on to do something else and what I've heard from a lot of fans too is out of the two I would rather see Jesse survive if one of them was going to survive I don't think Jesse's going to die, and I think I think I want him to survive, too. Now, he's not a guy suffering with cancer. He's a kid who has his whole life ahead of him. He can possibly redeem himself. I think in a lot of ways, he's just as guilty. He's involved in the drug trade. You know, in real life, you see a you see a house get broken into and a bunch of people get shot and you go, wow, that's senseless, you know, and then you find out later that the father was involved in drugs or owed a drug dealer and kids got killed because he was involved. This happens because when you get involved with these types of people in these types of situations, you're putting yourself, your family, your job, your livelihood, everything at risk, you know, you could be just smoking marijuana, but you don't know who those people are that are involved with the selling of that marijuana or who their supplier is or how dangerous they are. But when you get involved in that lifestyle, you bring about all sorts of risk to yourself and to your family. And I think Jesse, Walt, the other people that are now involved by proxy are, are in danger because of that lifestyle. Not necessarily because that's what Walt wanted, um, but, but you know, he, he, he got in over his head, but then he found a way to control it. And now he's in over his head again because he's dying. He can't really stop them from doing what they want. He can't stop them from taking his money. The cops are on to him. Everybody knows everything. It's, it's, a, it's a really bad time, obviously. And uh, uh, all things being equal, he should probably be in jail. But, of course, he's going to die. You know, we know he's a criminal. Criminals go to jail. Um, but I think, uh, for me, as a character on television... Knowing that he did it for good reasons, it t he sacrificed of himself to become what he has become in order to save his family. Even if at times it appears that he's become more of a drug kingpin and self more selfish and not cared about his family. And of course, seeing Jesse's um, one-time girlfriend, Brock's mother, shot down right in front of him.
I think Jesse's going to be completely subservient now. So I do think we have an opportunity to once again see Walt do something that redeems him uh, to, to some degree in the eyes of uh, some of the people who don't think he can be redeemed at this point. Vince Gilligan himself said that he doesn't think he's redeemable and that he no longer likes the character. But I think we have a shot here for him to not only redeem himself, but get his money back, uh, get rid of the guys who took it, and, and maybe possibly save his family and, and hopefully even impress his son. Uh, I think Skyler was a bit impressed by the phone call, even though she still is under the impression that Hank somehow was killed by Walt. Hopefully he clears that up because he's not somebody who would do that to family. And I think in the end, he for a long time thought of Jesse as family. But in that last episode before this one, he blamed Jesse for Hank getting killed, which was technically Jesse's fault at that time. But of course, both of their fault for getting this going in the first place. Same as Brock's mother getting killed. Jesse will probably hold Walt responsible, even though Todd did it, and even though Jesse was involved himself. But again, once you get involved in this lifestyle, it's very, very dangerous. It's obviously very, very bad for you. I'm very much looking forward to the finale tonight you know last week was a bit of a quiet one we saw how everything was going to end up you know fitting together and where we were going to go with it of course we got better call saul the spinoff coming up i'm not really sure where that's going to go or how good that's going to be uh he's kind of the jokey character on the show and i don't know if it's going to be episodic weird client of the week show and i'm not really that interested you know saul was good because he was interacting with these characters that are so great and he was a great character but i don't know if he's great enough to carry his own show that i'm going to care that much about this was a gripping drama really well written and great and i don't it doesn't sound like that show is going to be that because it's not that type of character it's not that type he's kind of a goofy as the comb over and all that stuff it's going to be before breaking bad so i am looking forward to it i'm going to check it out But uh, I don't think anything's going to be able to replace uh, Walter White and the story of his downfall or uh, uh, rise to power and then, and then hubris breakdown or whatever it is. But uh, watch it tonight. Um, let me know. How, let me know what you think. I'm I'm going to be watching it. I'm probably uh, going to watch it live. I'm going to be watching with AMC Story Sync, which is a thing you can do. You can go on AMC and watch the show at the you watch it, have that on at the same time, and they ask questions and things. Um, watch it, enjoy it, miss it when it's gone. You know, I've heard that the Dexter finale was very disappointing to a lot of people. I haven't watched it yet. It's part of the reason I haven't watched it, uh, just because I've heard very negative things about it uh, several times already. I am going to watch it. I have it. I'm, you know, I'm going to get to it. I Hopefully, and from everything that uh, people are saying, that this finale is unapologetic. It's breaking bad all the way. It's very satisfying. It's a great ending, and it fits uh, what you would expect to see. So I'm very much... Uh, Hoping for good things, tune in to my Great Scott segments every Friday at the Superman homepage. You can also find them on Scotty V on YouTube. Most of the time, my Great Scott segments are about things going on in Superman or opinion I have in the Superman world about the news or something that is going on. Occasionally, I do special ones like this. I imagine I will do one talking about my feelings about the finale and the show in general coming up here in the next week or so. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've gotten some perspective on at least what I think, I don't think he's going to kill his partners from Grey Matter. I think he's going to do something else, but he could. I do think it will be a bit of a letdown for the fans if that's who he goes after, because we haven't seen them since very early in the series, I think only the first season. They're kind of not important to the plot, they're not important to the show, but I could see them spurring him to action there by what they had said, because now he's saying, look, I'm being remembered as a nobody, as someone who didn't contribute anything when Grey Matter should have been half my company and somehow I got out, I, I fell out of it and, you know, got very, very unlucky and then I got involved in this and, and now I'm somebody but I'm getting looked at as a nobody so I got to do something about that and I got to change that um, I suppose he could but that would just seal the deal uh, for him as an evil character who was unredeemable and I think that would be a mistake although maybe that's the way they want to go but I also think as people that he's going to kill the fans probably wouldn't care that much about seeing those two get it because it's not like ooh, they need to get theirs you know those shootout guys I don't know that Lydia deserves anything in particular <laughs>
hope you get surprised. I hope you be excited. I hope it's a fantastic finale. Thanks everybody for watching. And remember, I'm the one who did this. Me, nobody else. Great Scott Biatch. You watch Scotty V. Yeah, bitch! Oh. Great Scott. Yeah, bitch! Great Scott. Great Scott, Bogdan. Great Scott.